When Marie Davian passed away unexpectedly of health complications at the turn of the 24th century, before she could nominate her nephew as the next president, it left the door wide open for the so-called twin tyrants to seize power. Theirs was a legitimate claim, being the sons of the older brother, but they were exactly the kind of ruler the Federated Sons didn't need, sharing far too many traits in common with their unpopular father. Simon Davian, the other claimant, was still too young to resist his cousins and press his claim. In retrospect, this probably saved his life, as the twins never took him seriously. The true power behind the twins was their mother, Marion Michaels Davian, the divorced wife of Etienne. A politically savvy individual, she gradually strengthened the ties of the Davian family to the presidency, and through them, her own power. Her passing in 2410 allowed for the manipulative younger brother, Edward, to take control behind the scenes while Edmund sat on the throne. Lacking the wisdom of his mother, his reckless and self-serving behaviour began to turn the nobility of the Federated Sons against them. Simon Davian, meanwhile, was dispatched on unimportant errands as nothing more than a glorified ambassador, but in so doing, they inadvertently gave him the opportunity to make a name for himself. It was Simon who attended the peace conference on Ares and signed that famous document, but his cousins refused to acknowledge his decision out of hand. When Edmund died, Edward sprang into action and quickly eliminated his main rivals, including Edmund's young daughter. From here, he reinforced his own personal bodyguard and began routinely dissolving Parliament whenever faced with opposition from that body. The inevitable result of these actions was open talk of secession. The November Conspiracy was born. Spearheaded by the worlds of Augusta, Arcadia, Friesland and El Dorado, trusted units of the Federated Peacekeeping Forces began making plans to commandeer the entire New Avalon system hijacking or destroying the stations, satellites and jump ships in the region, and creating a blockade around the planet while they proclaimed their secession from the Crucis Pact. Crucially, they did not have any intention of assassinating Edward, if that outcome could be avoided, but also struggled to agree on what course of action to take afterwards. Simon Davian had survived Edward's purges for the time being, chiefly because he was out of reach fighting on the Capellan planet of Jaipur. Even so, upon returning to his command headquarters, he was met with a stony-faced major, who informed him that it was his duty to arrest and execute Simon on the orders of his cousin. Once it became clear that he was not going to do so, Simon began making his own plots. His return to New Avalon was as celebrated as it was unexpected. Surely he knew that to set foot on the planet would almost certainly mean his demise. The route he had taken back to the capital was most circumspect, however, as if designed to keep his approach hidden from Edward. It was later discovered that several of the systems he had passed through were members of the November Conspiracy. When he arrived, he brought with him the news that Jaipur had been taken from the Capellans, and the government immediately began lavish celebrations to honour his conquest, temporarily keeping him out of the clutches of the President. Shortly after, a new council session was convened, with Simon and all other members present. Edward departed for the meeting with a small army of his personal guards. The second he set foot inside the council chamber, Simon snatched a firearm from one of his guards and shot Edward dead in five quick bursts, then immediately threw the weapon to the floor and surrendered himself to the councillors who swarmed over him to protect Simon from the stunned bodyguards. In the aftermath of the shooting, the Federated Sons was without a leader. The next in line was Edward's son Arthur, but few stepped forward to support his claim. So it was that the Davian on trial for murder became the favourite in the leadership debates. During his trial, Simon's case rested on the idea that he had become aware during his return voyage of preparations going on for certain planets to secede. Therefore, to avoid a costly civil war, he took actions into his own hands as a condemned man and killed the Davian president to avoid further bloodshed. In the end, Simon was acquitted of murder, and it was declared that he was guilty of nothing more than justifiable homicide, but served no time in prison for these actions. He had, in effect, gotten away scot-free. Simon would go on to become one of the most celebrated Davians in their entire lineage, but the question remains, just how deep did the November Conspiracy go? 
Simon claimed that he had noticed suspicious behaviour during his journey and couldn't help but conclude what actions the government was about to make. But was he secretly in league with them all along? First of all, his return itinerary stopped in the systems of many major conspirators. Was this a coincidence, or did he have foreknowledge of who was involved? Did they approach him during his layovers? Second, the celebrations that kicked off upon his return seemed far from spontaneous. The councillors must surely have known that the retribution for this act would have been extreme, and so would they have acted in this way had they not known that Edward would soon no longer concern them. Third was the man whose weapon Simon had managed to take in on the act. He had prior links to Simon and his cousin worked in the office of one of the conspirators. If he was involved, he probably didn't realise he was nothing but a pawn in the games the politicians were playing. Not long after the killing, he died in a house fire. There are some suggestions that this was a three-way struggle for power, and that the November conspiracy was actually using Simon in the belief that he would be killed, his execution giving them the final pretense they needed to declare and justify their secession. Simon in turn may have shocked them with his murder, and suddenly they found themselves involved in a far greater crime. There is no doubt that a cover-up took place after the fact. The same councillors who were plotting to overthrow Edward were the ones sentencing Simon. It may have benefited them not to dig too deeply into his actions in the lead-up to that fateful day. It was a very widely publicised trial, and they didn't want to air their dirty laundry in the open. Mere days after his acquittal, Simon Davian was sworn in as the ninth and last Davian president of the Federated Sons. In the immediate aftermath, he instigated a purge of the secret police and surreptitiously had files gathered on his actions destroyed. This was all a footnote for what would follow. Soon afterwards, Simon Davian would revolutionise the inner functions of the entire nation assuming the mantle of First Prince of the Federated Sons, and inadvertently paved the way for his family's darkest hour, and the largest of all conflicts fought during the Age of War.